Oh, squeeze myself in. Turn the aircon on because I'm going to need it today. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel uh, on a beautiful day in Lincolnshire. It is bright and early. It's just gone eight o'clock in the morning. I'm in the Audi TT Coupe and I'm about to take it for an MOT test. Stay with me then because in this video, hopefully, we're going to be getting a full year's worth of motoring by the end of it. So I've got up nice and early this morning just to make sure that the car is ready for test. I'm on my way to my local MOT test centre and all my MOTs are done by the same uh, company which is King's Garage of Stickney. Um, if you've seen the other MOT videos on the channel you will know that that is where I go and Neil there is the man with the plan. In fact it was Neil who I bought my smart night orange from about a month and a half ago now. So big shout out to Kings at Stickney. And if you're looking for MOT tests in the Lincolnshire area, um, including classic cars, I absolutely recommend you checking them out. Anyway, if you've watched the last video, you will know that Dad found a little bit of a problem. We needed to replace the steering rack boot or steering rack gator, depending where you're from in the world. Um, and it cost 20 quid new battery on the car that's cost 50 quid and the mot test today will cost 40 pounds if you are not familiar with what an mot test is by the way let me just give you a brief rundown it's effectively a safety check it's um something that all cars in the uk have to have unless they're over a certain um, year of build and that now is 1984 so 40 years uh, that's also when you're tax exempt so this obviously isn't tax exempt yet and the MOT test makes sure that everything is nice and safe and basically makes sure that the car is roadworthy by an approved tester it's something you have to do every year unless your car is under five years old and if your car is over 40 years old, you can still have an MOT test. You don't have to um, say you don't want one, or you don't have to not have one just because your car is over that, uh, that age bracket. And a lot of the classic car owners do still have um, their MOT at 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. So what will happen today then? I'm going to drive the car to the garage, put it on the ramp, and Neil will have a good look at everything. He'll look at the steering, he'll have a look at the wheels, the tyres, the lights, the braking, uh, absolutely everything, springs, seat belts, etc. And uh, you've got obviously different categories. You've got pass with no advisories, and advisory is something where Neil has looked at it and gone, that's not dangerous, but it could do with being repaired, monitored or replaced. And then obviously you've got a fail. So if you find something catastrophically wrong, then that is a fail. Now that steering rack boot splitting would have been a fail yesterday when we found that. So the fact that we've had to replace that means obviously I knew that the car would fail an MOT should that be found. <laughs> Considering this car is 24 years old now and one that I rescued from a breaker, it was destined for the breaker's yard. It doesn't half scrub up well, and I've actually cleaned the car this morning prior to the test, just for my own, I don't know, benefit and enjoyment. I got up nice and early and I've been washing cars. It's one of those days and one of those colours that if you start washing the car in um, the height of the day, you're going to get soap marks and it's going to be it's no good. You can't wash a car in, in the heat. 225 brake horsepower in this one. It does go nicely. As you can hear, um, I don't drive it like a Wally, as you can tell, but it does certainly pull away nicely and give you lots of options if you want to overtake or if you want to uh, have a little bit of power behind your driving style. So 60 miles an hour on this road. We have got a six-speed gearbox. Oh, there we go. If you're enjoying the content, by the way, that I'm putting out at the moment, Dad and I, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. That'd be a great help. Let me give you a brief history about the car. Dad and I took the car to his house the other day for an MOT pre-check, and we found a couple of things that needed doing. The washer bottle nozzle was blocked. The seat belts weren't retracting properly. Uh, the spare wheel needed blowing up. And, worst of all, 
the steering rack boot gator was split. And actually, I prefer this to my Roadster. I also own a Roadster. This just feels a bit more solid, a bit more driver comfort, and it's a lot quieter. Don't get me wrong, it's great to have the top off on a nice sunshiny day, but when you're bezzing to and from work, and it's two o'clock in the morning, you don't want it rattling about, and you don't have the top off. Anyway, I'm gonna pull the car into Neil's garage when we get there. We'll show you around the MOT test procedure. We'll have a chat with Neil, have a look at what's going on underneath, because I haven't looked at this car uh, since I bought it, and it's the first MOT test in my possession. Fingers crossed. Right, here we are then at Kings of Stickney, and they've got an MR2 uh, on the forecourt, actually. We'll have a look at that later on in the video. Let's just get the car in. And on the ramp, Neil's here already. He looks like he's removing a nail from, uh, from a tyre. And we're in, are we on? All right, mate. How you doing? Oh. 140 617. The high, highest mileage car in my collection. So we're on the ramp, and after saying good morning to Neil and a few people at the garage, it's time to do the MOT test. First thing Neil will do is do a physical walk around of the car, make sure everything's okay, check that there's no major issues. Um, and I will warn you, there's a few strobing images in this uh, this bit because the LED batons play havoc with my camera and I can't work out how to get that sorted yet. So um, strobing effects, just a quick warning for you guys. Um, we've done the walk around test, now it's time to do the emissions test. Neil pops a probe in the exhaust pipe there. That's the first thing he does, make sure that the uh, car passes the emissions test. There are strict standards with regards to emissions and we'll see in just a moment the readout. And as you can see, all good from the sensors, all good from the emissions. So that's the first bit done. Oh, and there's the, uh, there's the probe in the exhaust pipe that you can see it clips onto there. Quite difficult with some older vehicles, um, however, it's passed not an issue at all. Right, next port of call then is to send the car up on the ramp and have a good look underneath it. And like I said, I think in the introduction, I've never been underneath this car properly and I've never had a good look underneath it. And it is the first MOT test with my ownership. And actually, doesn't that car, doesn't that car shape look <laughs> lovely um, nowadays? It was something that when it came out, I wasn't a major fan of the TT, but looking at it now, what a beautiful shape and design. So Neil's going to jack the front suspension up, uh, check the wheels and everything that side, and then he'll do the rear as well. But whilst he's doing that, I take an opportunity to have a look at these sills. Let's take a look at this near side sill. No major rot or damage to it. It's filthy. I need to give it a good clean. Um, and, and maybe I'm going to give that a protect as well under there because you, go, you can't see that. And the last thing I want is rotten sills. Let's take a look at this sill. Again, nice and clean. In fact, actually, the sills have been repaired and painted in its life, I believe. Right, Neil is then looking at that new uh, boot. Good job. <laughs> he said it was good. He, uh, he could tell that we'd done it, obviously. Um, and now it's time to look under the front. You can see there's a little bit of damage to that plastic under tray, but that is not a major issue. Um, air intake, let's call it. Actually, you can see that front splitter needs a little bit of a scrub as well. Now I'm under the car, which uh, Neil lets me have a look under, and I haven't been under it, as I say, have a look at the um, rot there. There's no rot on those sills, and actually it's quite well protected. There's nothing underneath the car that made me look and go, oh, that's a problem. And as you can see from looking at this sill and these pipes, it is relatively clean underneath, which, which did surprise me, considering I've only had the car about a year, I haven't really used it and not, not giving it a good clean underneath with the jet wash. It does also look like it's got either the original or uh, an OEM uh, replacement back box on there. So if it's not the original, then it is going to be a, a genuine Audi replacement. Having a look under there at all the suspension components. And uh, yeah, help, I've been squished by an Audi TT. <laughs> it is a beautiful thing. And again, apart from that, a little bit of corrosion on the uh, on the cats there. No major issues. Just give it a tart up with some Lanagard or something. And uh, Neil had a good look underneath it, and he was genuinely impressed as well. He says he sees a lot of these, 
and this one is one of the best. They're, they're often quite ropey, and that's because, well, there's thousands of them out there, isn't there? And maintenance of these older cars is getting a bit harder for people. I don't think they've really reached classic car status yet, but they're one uh, on my list of things to buy anyway. Right, time to bring it down, and then Neil is going to check some bits. This side, he's making sure that he can get out of his garage because it's time to check the brakes, the handbrake, the lights the wipers and all sorts of other bits and pieces on the rolling road. So I've come out of the way, make sure I'm nice and safe so I don't get squished. And Neil's in the car now, he backs it out and he's gonna pop it onto some rollers that are built into his floor. You can see he's got a lovely old school light alignment tester there as well, which we'll have a look at. So first to test the handbrake and the back brakes. And again, the way that that is done is he pops it on this rolling road then applies the brakes and his machine there will tell him the um, resistance and how good they are. Thankfully, all good. No major issues across the brakes, especially as we've had a look at them in the pre-MOT test vehicle. He's got the lights on, as, as you can see at the moment as well. He's testing all those and he'll test the uh, wipers and the wiper bottle as well. That's good. All good there. It's actually good to see these. It's a shame it doesn't tell me uh, on his rolling road, brake horsepower, etc. Oh, that's a good shot, isn't it? Look at that beautiful wheel. Shame I didn't uh, clean the uh, tyres. <laughs> Else that would have been beautiful. And there we go. Last wheel tested, last brakes tested, and you just saw that. Right, moment of truth. MOT done. <laughs> there it is then. I'm sure Dad will be absolutely thrilled to hear that the TT has got another year of trouble-free motoring, hopefully, on the cards. MOT test passed and done before nine o'clock in the morning. Ha-ha! That gives me a whole day now to do other things. Uh, things that are happening today, I'm getting a new key cut for the Smart Orange. That's coming up today courtesy of the team at DK Automotive in Lincolnshire and I'm hoping to get the Toyota MR2 out the garage and a few pre-MOT checks on that as well. Well the good news is now I can enjoy the car, I can drive it, I can commute in it, I can take it here, there and everywhere. There was still 20 odd days left on the MOT when I uh, booked in but now I can enjoy it and take it for a proper spin. Well, there it is then, another year of MOT for the Purple TT. Thank goodness, and I looked at the mileage history, it's only covered sort of 1,300 miles in the last year, and I actually thought I'd driven it a lot more than that. Um, no advisories, hooray, another pass for the TT Purple Pig. And actually, I'm going to treat it now to a bit of a wash and wax. Thanks for coming along with me on this MOT. If you've enjoyed the video, thumbs up, please, if you haven't already done so. If you haven't subscribed, why not? Hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified when new stuff comes to the channel. I blooming love my Audi TT Mark One. Dad hates it. I love them. I think they're a beautiful car. Happy with that. Oh! <laughs> I'm having too much fun driving this car. <laughs> Slow down, John. You'll get fly splatters on your windscreen. This car just makes me smile. Just makes me smile. I've got the aircon on. I'm comfortable. The sun is shining and I'm enjoying the finest Lincolnshire's back roads. In a purple Audi TT. <laughs> 30 miles an hour, fine. 60 miles an hour, fine. Would you like your hair cutting, sir? Fine. And that's it, back home before nine o'clock. And Mrs. John Coupland isn't even out of bed. <laughs> Lazy bear. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, let me know. 
in the comments below. Next. If you've enjoyed this video, I've selected a few more specially for you on this page. Click either side to select them now. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button to always stay up to date with the channel.